Yo guys, today's gonna be vibes on vibes because I have my friend and DJ, DJ Obi on my couch. Just put your hands together for my guy. <laughs> <laughs> today, love you, honest, serious one. No, today, no, we're no, catching no, cruise geez, from beginning to cruise, end. Man. How you doing? How you doing? Good to see you, man. You, know, you, you think you know your friends until you go on Google <laughs> and find out that their name is Levi. Strong name. Oh, your name is Levi. My name is Levi. Yeah. Strong name. I'm named after my dad. Really? Livia Jonoma Jr. Yeah. Wow. But based on Igbo man things, Obina came first. Yeah. I'm the only one in my family out of eight children that has an Igbo name as a first name. So there's Amy, Sarah, Michael, Benjamin, Becky, Daniel, and Debbie. Obina. Why? <laughs> Why? I mean, how else was he going to name his first son? <laughs> right, right. You right. understand? But you know what Levi means, right? Um, Do you have an idea? Yeah, was it temple worshippers or something like that? <laughs> uh, no, I think the Levites were the musicians in like God, the Old the Testament creators, and everything. Yes. So yes, maybe so he him. didn't. He didn't go. He, he wasn't far off, and he was creative as well. Oh, Very right. strong creative. Uh, rest in peace to my dad, Doctor Olivia Jonoma, who um, I pretty much took after, honestly speaking. Um, I admired my dad so much. So from a young age, I knew what I wanted to do in life. I knew I wanted to be like my dad. <laughs> so I do. I had to go through this school thing. Was he doing music? No, he didn't do music. But he was in, He, you know, funny enough, my dad actually played instruments, if I remember. Now, my dad, there was one time he surprised us in his office. I think he had a good day that day and he, he, he started playing the guitar, singing, praise and worship. And you guys didn't know that he could do that? We didn't know till that day. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Evil man. I just yeah. hide everything. Hide everything. <laughs> Very creative guy. Yeah, man. Nice one. So maybe you have a calling on your life. So. I know that I do. Yeah. Today. I know that I do. At some point, I'm going to call you to... <laughs> to I'm not even joking, but I was a child pastor. Stop. I'm dead ass. <laughs> Obi. I'm dead ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead ass. Obi, wait. I was a child pastor. My ministry was end time. Tell me that. Why are you shouting? My ministry was at I my know you now. Actual. I'm trying to connect both. Ah, bro. Well, adults and that bro, child. Now me, the lead assembly. That, that time for school, where they did praise and worship, where they did prayer, where they did... The, Ajonuma. Ajonuma. Yes, sir. Obi Ajonuma, come and lead praise and worship. Come and lead praise. I was in the choir. Bro, I'm a minister. Yes. Yes. Of the so I know. So now we can call point. you Apostle in the Marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> right now, because in the streets right, right at now. Some, at some point, it's going to happen. At some point, it's going to happen. Yeah, I yeah. know that. I know Ooh, it. Voila. I, I'm happy about that. Let's quickly sip some Lipton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you, Lipton, for keeping it refreshed and allowing us experiences human connection. Um, You went to watch the match. Um, Nigeria, Ghana. How was it? Were you heartbroken? <sighs> Funny enough, that was my first live sporting event. I've never, even know my Yankee years, I've never been to like a basketball game, like maybe college for um, basketball or I've something like that. I've never even been to a game in my life. You understand? So that was my first time, man. Bro, disaster. Disaster, bro. Nothing Did you leave was before the drama started happening? The drama started, the, what you guys saw was just a continuation of the drama. The drama started from, from that morning. Traffic coming when you land in when you when I landed in Abuja, traffic trying to get into the city from you know because when you drive through the gate, the Abuja gate, mm. the stadium is right there, so there was traffic from that point backing up because then civil servants were closing early to be able right. to watch the match. Right. Then, you know, you got to the to the stadium, nothing was organized, nothing. When I mean nothing, nothing was organized at all. I wanted to throw a quick shade based on the Pepsi ambassador. If, if Pepsi was handling certain things, well, Pepsi would have organized it properly. Well, <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, man, it was just it was it was a disaster. And then at some point, when we thought, when me and my guys thought that, oh, we finally made it to our box suite, mm. you know, even though AC no walk, there was no refreshments, nothing. Like ah, at least we're in. Match was literally about to start. We were taking snaps, taking snaps. Oh, look at us. I see. But two minutes after that snap, 200 people rushed into that street, bro. I'm not joking. Eh? Like, in fact, maybe more than 200. We went from being six of us to just heads. Wait, like, were tickets sold to those people? No, see, so that was, that, that was the thing. I, it, it now made it feel so annoying and so, 
I don't know. I, I, you've seen it online. People were complaining. Yeah. Why did I buy this ticket? Why did I, bro? The the box suite is one point five. You pay for that. You still bought, and it came with ten tickets, right? But then when I, it almost was like they just let the floodgates open. They just yeah. opened the gates, and everybody. I had friends that at some point during the game they just called me. Oh, I'm at the stadium. People that said they were not coming. That were watching the match. Nigerian thing. They just pulled up mm. and they were in the stadium. How did they get in? They had no tickets. They had no nothing. They just walked in, walked in. So the whole thing was a disaster from jump. Honestly speaking, I heard they were supposed to be twenty five k, but they went over capacity. The capacity is sixty k. They hit the sixty k and still almost touched seventy or even, possibly even past seventy k, bro. So I'm sure FIFA is going to find Nigeria based on that. Outside yeah. of the riots that was happening and all of that, you know. But truthfully. Mm. Just as Nigeria is, <laughs> it's chaotic, but it's fun. So it was a fun experience. Yeah. It was it was fun just seeing, you know, the the people shouting, football fans, and to some extent it was patriotic as well, because I don't think I've ever seen that many Nigerians come out to feel proud about yeah. something, yeah. you know, except yeah. for answers. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it was very patriotic and and at the end of the day, it was an experience, it was fun, but it could have been better. It could have been way, yeah. way better. I mean, we lost someone, one of the officials, rest his soul. From the stampede. It was you know, yeah. it was so sad. When I go home and I so I didn't stay to the end. I left at like the 75th minute or something like that because I knew <clears throat> with the amount of crowd in the stadium, I didn't want to follow everybody to leave, you know. And I feel like this um, VVIP treatment that people get, you know, our, our politicians, government officials is ridiculous, you know. I don't, I don't know. I've, I feel like there's, there's, there's Nigeria and there's Nigeria. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, it was so terrible because they made no provision for anybody else but VVIPs yeah. or the 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 dignitaries, the delegates, you know what I'm saying? There was nothing else for anybody to the food, drinks. It was just it was. But I was, even Jello was saying that they promised you guys food from the beginning. Bro, I said the, the suite was 1.5 suite like this box suite, empty, no AC, fridge empty, nothing. Yeah. Thankfully, the toilet was working. Yeah. Country Seriously, in this country, bro, it brother. was terrible. It was terrible. But at the end of the day, we made it work. If, Nigerians, we always push through. Yeah, we make I think it work. That's, that's our. That's our, our thing. Talent. Yeah, we'll make it work. We'll, we'll make survive. it work. So we did. We made it work. We just because at the end of the day, six of us against what 250, 300 people that rush into us. We we cannot we're not going to drag it. So we, we all just maintain people <laughs> watch this match finish. Bro, you know. Wow, wow. Yeah, man. But nice. I'm happy that I hear I'm hearing now that we actually qualified through some technicality. Is it? Um that's what I heard, but I'm still trying to confirm it. Congratulations, Nigeria. Congrats. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Let's talk about your career as a DJ, my mm. brother. So was DJing always in the works for you? Did you always know you're gonna be a DJ or eventually? I knew I was always gonna be in entertainment because right. like I said, I wanted to be like my dad. Mm. So my dad, um, if you if you Google my dad, <laughs> uh we'll after this podcast. Yeah, don't worry. If you Google my dad, he started out in the East. With the radio station in Imo State, went to the States to do his, you know, the university, master's, PhD, and came back in 89 with us, four of us, and um, went on to do Morning Ride on NTA 2 Channel 5. He was that guy. Yes, <laughs> he was that guy. My dad was, <laughs> and for, for lack of better description, my dad was the Larry King of Nigeria. I love it. He did um, Morning Ride. He did he did his own show, Sunday show on on NTA 10, right? That was the, wow. The, yeah. That was running for like 13 years, 13, 14 years. And at some point, in my, my dad was on TV and radio every day of the week. Wow. So Monday, he had Insurance Today. Tuesday, he had another show. Wednesday... Thursday was some, you know, business shows. You have one business shows, insurance yeah. today, teach you about insurance, teach you about business. Then Friday was um, Good World of Entertainment. Then Saturday on the radio was Open House Party, which was everybody. He favorite. did that too? Yes. So, that so was, you were always that was exposed to that always space. around a TV set, VTR room, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was I was all oh, I've always I've grown up in this space, yeah. you know. Then Sunday he did Sunday show as well. So it was a no brainer, you know, and it was always exciting because he always put our names on the credits because we would always contribute to like current affairs. <laughs> quote oh, you like research for him and, yeah, exactly oh, to cool. give him gist, you know. We'll record all those um award shows to let him know whose performance was hard, who's you know, who won what. Oh, wow. Yeah, because yeah, he will yeah. use that on radio on the next day. He'll use that on radio or he'll take the clips, edit, 
putting on the on the TV She's show. She's always been in this so system. So literally, I've always been in the system. So I was because I was going to ask if you had support from your parents, but with this thing you've well, said, my dad was also a very, very, very strong Christian. So like, so, so like, <laughs> like, like I've said, I I think at some point I'm going to you know mount a pulpit. But <laughs> my dad was very, Sorry. very. <laughs> no, 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 don't worry, bro. I, I'm. The, no, when it, when God it can. Nothing. <laughs> God. I'll be with you. I need to come. What God can do? Does does that that is so. Thank you. He gets. Um. So my dad was pretty much. If if my dad wasn't in the entertainment industry, he would have been a pastor. Honestly speaking. That so, type of guy. Yes. So as much as he was in the entertainment industry, he wasn't about the entertainment industry. He really just handled it as work, as passion, because that's what he loved to do. And, you know, so truthfully, when I started DJing, he wasn't necessarily for it, even though he did buy me my first set of turntables. Mm. But when he came back from that trip, because I was in the States, when he came back from that trip, it's almost like he called his pastor to just be like, hey, I just did this for me. And that, I don't know what they told him, but he called me. I like, see that thing, pack it, pack it, pack it, pack it, burn it, 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 it. <sighs> because you're going into the world yes, to play that, worldly music and, <laughs> and then I read I never did I never did anytime he was coming to the States to, to so you were in school it, at the time when I you was started school. I started you... when I was 19 what were you studying at the time? mass communication broadcasting and print right. media so if you're not going to be a DJ you're probably going to be like an on, on air presenter on air, uh, yeah I would, that's what I'm saying I would have definitely been in the entertainment space either behind the scenes or on camera so when why did you fall in love with DJing? Jimmy Jack. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to DJ Jimmy shout Jack. Out, Daddy Jimmy, Uncle Jimmy, whatever you want to call mm. him. So when I was young, my dad used to do a lot of work with Nigerian breweries. Mm. And um they had uh do you remember TBS? They used to have Carnival and um Star Trek, all these big shows, yeah. you know. So one day he took us with him. I can't remember which one exactly it was, but it was at TBS. And as we were walking in, I just it was a f- sea of people. I was just like, ah, this is a packed event. I think that was one of the first times he actually took us to like one of his gigs, you know. So as we're walking in, he's talking to his friends and we're standing there and the crowd is just raving, raving and they're hailing Jimmy Jat on the stage. Mm. And I still remember the mix till this day. That mix is what made me say, you know what, what that guy did, mm. I want to learn it. So wow. we walk in and he's talking to his guys, you know, checking in how we do now when, yeah. when we see each other outside, yeah. <laughs> you know. And he was hailing Jimmy Chad. Oh, Jimmy Chad, so welcome to the stage, Jimmy Chad. And he starts playing and Dangerous, Buster Rhymes Dangerous just dropped. And there was this group, there's, there used to be this group called Black Girl and they had a song called 90s Girl. So he was playing 90s Girl and it, there's a point in 90s Girl where it says, hold up, wait a minute. And so when he did that, he said, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> the crowd went, went nuts. Like when I mean nuts, like it was to the point where he shook me like, oh, are we safe? Like the crowd went mad. In, in Lagos here? TBS. TBS. I want to say this was like, I don't know, when, when did Buzz, when did uh, Dangerous go 96? Maybe 97? This was TBS in 96? Yes, bro. That's what I'm telling you. I was born in 96. <laughs> <laughs> There is a, wow! Yes, so that's I'm like, which song? But it's waiting. Bro, no, oh my goodness! There's, 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 <laughs> my there's, senior colleague. <laughs> oh man! But yeah, but that's how it happened. When he did that mix, I was sold. So from that point, I I always remember that, you know. Mm. And so when eventually when I went on to uni, broke uni student, you know, <laughs> trying to make extra funds. Let me say, Popsino, they send money, but it's well. just like. I have my, I have to be accountable for what the money he's sending. So I need some extra funds that I to don't need to be accountable of. You understand? So um I first thought about becoming a party promoter, but then the Igbo money me kicked in. I was just like, I might not make money, I might make money. What's that? I don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? So I thought about the DJ, and I was like, you know, someone someone in, in my class was explaining to me how, you know, DJs are dope. And I was like, yeah, I remember, you know, Jimmy Jap, blah, blah, blah. So I decided to buy my first set of um, decks. Turntable? Yeah. And just go with the pastor. I, I, I trained myself. I didn't go to like DJ school. Wow. I didn't go. Yeah, just because I'd been around it. So I knew, I was, I used my ear to listen to my mixes to make mm. sure, you know, because I know what Jimmy Jatt was doing. I know what FX2, DJ FX2 in Ray Power was playing, Shai Shai mm. Shilon. I know what they were playing, you know. Mm. So I, if I can play, if I can mix like that, then I think I'll be fine. 
And literally, that's how I learned. Let's talk about Guinness. Hey, that was a divine idea. Yeah. That was a very... So, it's, it's good you're talking about that because that was a very strong and very real breaking point for my career in Nigeria. Mm. I've come to Nigeria now. I've been in the States for maybe at this point, eight, nine years or something like that. I built a brand in the States. Mm. How do I come to Nigeria now and start? Is it, there's a huge difference coming home in December and going back yeah. and then coming and staying and you is are it, now the competition different. to all these DJs that normally get their regular everyday gigs. Mm. You now come and chook head. And is there beef among the DJs? Uh, bro. Like, Petty. for this small, small club, this is one that they small club, oh. It'll be small club because no, it's somebody's like, better it's it's someone's bread and butter now. Yes, now. Oh, so people feel it's a type of way when new people come into the space. Yes. Imagine see another new podcaster or, you know, actor or somebody comes into town because, you know, they get phone head and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Who be this like, one? Who be this guy? This, you get it. And that was really what it was. So, but a lot of times people were asking that question. Who is this guy? My manager at the time, Chin, or actually, no, it's before... Uh, before Issa was chain, and we oh Issa managed you. Yes, uh, we used to we used to just try and get certain gigs, and they always be oh I've, who is Obi? Who is DJ Obi? Who is DJ Obi? Who is Obi? Some people oh I've heard of him, but mm. you know there wasn't really that stamp of approval, and it was almost like every time we we're getting gigs, it was like we we're begging for it. Right, bro. Really? Ah, uh, because I I I always just assumed that it was all love among DJs. I never really well any. not well. There's, there's, because <laughs> you play with a lot of DJs. I've come, I've co- because to I, I come from a place where I, I'm, I have a clean heart, bro. I have a good heart, you know. So I don't see anybody as competition. I will bring you in with me. I mm-hmm. like collaboration. I mm-hmm. like to work together because that's how we can create something gr- even greater than whatever idea I had mm-hmm. to for myself, mm-hmm. you know. But Nigeria has taught me that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, be everybody be Jesus so Christ. So your tent, so Israel. You understand? So when I came back, there was a lot of hiccups. I would just be trying to get certain gigs and be like, no, let's go with this other guy first. I don't know this guy. Let's go with this other guy. Oh no, this guy is my guy. This guy is my guy. Who is this guy? Who is these people? We know mm-hmm. that. So one day, then, so I, at this time, Asa was managing me now mm-hmm. and it was becoming very annoying because Asa was working really hard to get me a lot of gigs because he Issa is like a entertainment child prodigy. Like, yeah. if you don't know Issa in the entertainment industry, yeah. you never blew. You understand what I'm saying? And I was grateful for that. I was grateful for Issa, for Chen, and some of the other people that have helped me out, you know, on the managerial side. So one day, there's a conference, Red Flower PR, if I, if I remember. Mm-hmm. Um, Leslie who was running Channel O, head of Channel O at the time, came to speak at the conference and I was attending. And she mentioned the fact, the fact that Black Coffee had decided to break a world record at some point. You know, she was talking about people doing big things and great things mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I'm a huge Black Coffee fan. Anybody that knows me, Black Coffee is my first introduction to house music. I love Black Coffee strongly. So when I heard Black Coffee, my atten- it grabbed my attention. I was listening. And he said, oh, you try to break a world record. You try to do this. Whatever. I was like, what? Did he break it? I, it was an attempt. And it was for, he was trying to do it for four days or something like that at the time. This was 2016. What was the record then? The first record, I think, was two days. It started out small. It was 24, 24 hours before you know someone did two days before you know someone wanted to do four days. So I was like, oh, this is a thing. Mm. I, right there in the conference, I Googled it and... I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. In 2016, my career turned 10. So I wanted to do 10 days for 10 years, right? Wait, what was the record before 10 days? Eight. You said it. 200 oh. hours, yeah. The audacity. The audacity. But guess what? I had done it already, even at that Wildflower PR conference. It, in my mind, it was done. So the, it was just to now execute. Wow. But... Before we did, before we proceeded, obviously you feel like the paperwork, do all these things, and you know sometimes when you have this huge idea in your mind, in your being, mm. you become very restless. So for a very long time, I was very restless as to what this was going to do for me, what it was about, you know. 
But I, like I said, I just wanted to do it because I felt like this was going to be a huge global stamp. So I know I would not only just cover Nigeria, I would cover the world. So nobody needed to ask me who was DJ OB. If you ask me who DJ OB is, that Google will, that. It's on you. Yeah. <laughs> Go out, Google B. You understand know what I'm saying? And that's really how the world record came about. You know, reached out to a few people. A lot of people didn't believe I was going to do it. But I got encouragement from one of my big brothers that I still hold dearly till today, Kelechi Dozier. When I went to him to, to talk to him, it was just like, a, yeah, let's get it. Let's do this, do this. And he just made everything happen. I was like, oh, wait, we're really doing it? I was like, all right, cool. You know? <laughs> Weren't you scared of not failing after I wasn't involving so many people? To me, DJing, like, I like I, I love it. I, I can, if you put Dex here now, I can keep playing. For 10 days. Did you I sleep at all? I, I, so I ended up doing nine. Right. I did 230 hours. I went, I was 10 hours shy of 240. Yeah. But I didn't sleep. No sleep at all. For nine days. For nine days. Uh, non-stop. Promise you, bro. What were, what were you surviving on? So the first few days, normal food. The first two days was good. First two, three days, I was good. So I can say I can easily do three days now. No hiccups. I can give you three days non-stop. Of not sleeping. Of not sleeping. How, would you, how did your body react to that? First my of? body started acting up by the fourth day. Um, I started hallucinating. I couldn't recognize my family members. I couldn't recognize my bro. I was having different, like, I'll be Why are you not going to stop? Why did I stop? Why, why, why are you not going to stop? No, why would I stop? I had to get to the end, I, you know. But then that last day was really tough. I had to stop because I you needed... You said no. Yeah. No. Truth, truth is, I, I was willing to push through, but at this point, my body was was done. Mm. Bro, at some point, I was pissing in a bottle because, yeah, people didn't know, so they would clear them, they would push them back. Okay, um, no no pictures, no pictures. You guys stay outside. So you, so you could feel bend down? I would up. bend down. I would just stand. Jehovah! <laughs> I would just stand. Oh, yeah. she's not cash you. Bro, but I got so long till because now, you have to understand, the, the, rule, <laughs> the rule was that I can do... 20 minutes after every four hours. Yes, that was what it was. 20 minutes after every four hours for a break. So in the first few days, I was pushing it to 24, 24, so I can get two hours every 24 oh, to hours. to gather your minutes. Yes. But then after I, after some point, I had to now start taking my breaks every 20 minutes, every um every uh, the 20 minutes after every four yeah. hours. But then what would not happen? I will come back to start DJing. Peace don't catch me. Ah. I can't move for four hours, bro. So you hold that piece for I them. hold that piece. But guess what happened the last day? Last day I held that piece. So the, when I now went to pee, blood. Jesus. I swear. That, so that's why I stopped. That's when my family was like, no, 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 guy, guy, guy is enough. You have tried. Because at this point, I beat the guy's record. I was just setting my own record. So it was like, you've actually done it. So leave it. <laughs> so when I went to wow. pee that day, I pissed blood for like the few, first few like five seconds or whatever and then I had to come out and tell them like yo I don't think I can do this again and like what happened I pissed blood like eh oh, yeah, everybody party's over party's over who the card who the card the speakers how was lockdown for you lockdown was interesting lockdown was mind opening I rediscovered myself in lockdown just because I, I try to tell people that God stopped the world for me for everybody I say for me, for I was going through darkness, bro. So, I, and at that point in my life, like, I was just like, what the fuck is happening with me? Before lockdown or during lockdown? Right before lockdown. So, going into, going into 2020 was just like, I don't know where my life is going right now, but I need a break. I need, yeah. to, I need to stop. And I couldn't figure out how I was going to stop. And then COVID. <laughs> this thing Tell me about this COVID. darkness, please. This thing called COVID. <laughs> this thing called COVID happened, you know, and I just so happened to be in Nigeria by myself, you know, so it was a very low point because I went from like no kids to two kids. Yeah. At once. So... <laughs> It was a very um, dark because I was also trying to rediscover love mm. while losing it. So it was a very, it was a very like redefining moment for me. And 
when I needed that to find myself again, to speak to God again, to be like, yo, I think I've been running mad in mm. these streets mm. and I need you again. And, you know, so we, we, when COVID happened, I got to f- like talk to myself. I got to sit down and speak to myself very, very like bluntly about everything that was happening in my life and pray for forgiveness. I felt a very huge sense of disappointment because I felt like I was li- reliving my my father's sins. As as deeply spiritual as my dad was, you know, when it came to the family side of things, he wasn't, you know, he was the best dad. Mm. But relationship wise, if you speak to my mom, he was a bastard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know, I was, you know, my stepmom, because my dad got married twice. Mm. So I found myself in the same situation and I was just very, very I was just in a very dark space. Which is why I started going out my hair, actually. People did people thought I was trying out a new hairstyle. No, I was very depressed. <laughs> I was very, very depressed, you know, and I was just in a very dark place. Mm. So COVID helped me just chill, just realize like, guy, things happen. Yeah, don't beat yourself up about it. You don't don't ever go. F- no matter how far away you go, mm. always remember that you can come back to God. That's yeah. what a lot of people don't know. I think the I think for COVID, for a lot of people, the world like stopped so that we could start again, and a lot of people found themselves during COVID. Like a lot of people were depressed. Yeah, but- yeah. I feel COVID just made the world stop so that all of us can just recalibrate and just... Mm-hmm. And it was necessary. Yeah, very important. I feel like power change hands True. During, during COVID. True. You know. True. Um, and anybody that was... Anybody that is spiritually sound will know mm. that, you know, there was a shift. There was a shift. There was a very strong shift in people's lives, in the world, spiritually, physically. There was a shift. So, it was the best time to run under the covering of God just mm. to just to make sure that you're on the right side of things. Yeah. You know, so I had to I had to rediscover honesty. I had to rediscover forgiveness and forgiving myself and learning to let go and not, you know, it, it was it was a lot. But I thank God that I was able to get though I'm still getting through, but I'm, I feel like I'm at the tail end of it and, you know, coming out of it and feeling like, okay, we can we can do life again, you know. It was a very dark point, bro. But <laughs> let me sip us up. Let me sip us up. Some good lips in. Shout but out. having kids, did it change you? Like, what did it do for you? Um, it changed me. It changed my hustle. It changed my mindset. Mm. Um, it's a different feeling. Kids changed my life. Made made me more um, forgiving. Um, because. I can't see children as a mistake. You understand what I'm saying? As much mm. as I didn't want it to happen the way it did, mm. it's still a blessing. Yeah. You know, so these are the, it's a different level of maturity when you hit rock bottom. I don't even know if this is rock bottom or bare, like I fall, my back the ground, it day under the ground, bro. But you see, one thing that my dad gave me that I know that will carry me on for life mm. is God. So I just knew that I needed to hold on to God yeah. and as tight as possible and just, you know, gravitate towards more positive energy and mm. light and stuff like that, you know. The way you're brought up is very important, right? So at some point, and I come from a broken home, clearly. So at some point in my life, telling a white lie or a black lie was survival. Yeah. I almost died when I was 10 <laughs> from yeah. telling the truth because I went to pick my sisters up from school. Mm. Right? After that point, it scarred me. And and I'm realizing now because I have, have, I have to go to therapy. Yeah. To go back to figure out at what point in your you life. You went through th- I'm in therapy. Going through therapy, you have to just backtrack. Yeah. You know, so I, and from therapy, I realized that a lot of times when I was telling the truth, I was getting punished. Yeah. But they said the truth to set you free. And it wasn't. 
<laughs> not from your parents be single, but I feel like internally. It, not even, even from that. For internally beating because it's like, oh, so you did it. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So for to stay out of trouble, I tell a white lie. And before you know it, white lies became a thing, you know. Hmm. And it flows into relationships. Yeah. You know, heartbreak can cause things. I remember um leaving one relationship, starting another one. And when I started the other one, maybe a few months into it, I ran into my ex at a gig. And off of me being, trying to, you know, start this new relationship and be honest with this person that I met, mm. I mentioned the fact that I saw my ex at the party and my ex was like, oh, long, I haven't seen you in a long time. We should link up. And I laughed about it. My new girlfriend spazzed. Spazzed, bro. I promise never to tell her anything again, <laughs> bro. Uh, she spars, bro. Yeah. Like, like spars. Bro. Also, I also think that it's because I mean, most of us are actually broken. It's not even a, it's not so about we'll, only we'll you. What? Yeah, it might be our own trauma that was kicking in when. Yeah, true that you know, but I have my own trauma as well, yeah. and that's why sometimes, well, now growing up as as adults, we now know that open conversation, mm. honest conversation. I feel like we. Our generation, your generation, whoever, this new generation needs to be more vocal with our kids and coming even yeah. with our peers about life. Let's just talk about things because our parents did not talk. Yeah. And they never painted a real picture to us. True. In 2021, I had a very serious mental breakdown. I lost my laptop. Well, not lost it. So I, room 69, because we're talking about lockdown, right? <laughs> room 69 came about during lockdown room 69 is this R&B live we started on Instagram so shout out to everybody that you know tuned into room 69 Obi's house started on Instagram as well you know but room 69 took over because every other DJ online was doing party 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 on their live mm. but then I was doing party but I was looking for a different niche and yeah. R&B is one thing that I really love shout out to Ogwa in Abuja uh, Ogwa you know Spoke about it. Links helped me out a lot to put in the graphics together, put in, you know, but Ogwa was the one that actually came up with the with the tag name, um, Room 69 for R&B lovers and blah, blah, blah. So Room 69, 2021 Valentine edition, I decided to do it outside in my balcony on my terrace because my daughter was sleeping in the house now. Right. Um, but when I finished... I fell asleep in the house because I was just like, I wake up in the morning and pack my stuff. But I woke up to heavy rainfall. My laptop, my mixer, my phone, everything wow. still set up outside. So I, li so I literally woke up running <laughs> to try and get my laptop um, sorted out. I, by the time I got it, rained on beta, my phone, my mixer done. I made the huge mistake of plugging my laptop to the charger it fried my laptop. I lost everything, bro. So at that point, I lost everything. Um, and like the next day, man, I just had a really, really bad mental breakdown and just disappeared for three days. Yeah. Where you go? <laughs> Prayer City. Yeah. Ah! Stop. Yep. It was that deep. MFM Prayer City. You needed that? I needed it, bro. Wow. I thank God. Like I said, if, if there's one thing that my dad left with me that I'll never ever trade for anything in the world is God. I could have gone anywhere else. I'm happy Believe you me. went there. Yeah. <laughs> Believe you me, I could have gone yeah. anywhere else, bro. I had options. I could have gone anywhere else, but I knew that I was in trouble spiritually, so I needed to to fortify myself. I needed to go and cry. Yeah. And it's okay to cry, especially to God. Very much so. I needed to go and break down, literally just break down to God, that guy, I don't fuck up. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Help me. <laughs> Did you feel better me. after? I felt great after. God gave me the game plan that's working right now when I when I was there. Obi's house on a Monday. <laughs> I remember I clap for Obi. <laughs> Obi, they check this Lagos on a Monday. On a Monday I night. I didn't know that people could turn up. We don't get work for this Lagos. <laughs> <laughs> Nine to fivers. Yeah. Everybody in Lagos. Like, you know, in December, I was literally counting how much you and Bolivar will probably make. I don't count all the bottles with the pass. You can't, bro. I say, Jesus, Obi, and these people are in their bag. We could, 
there was a point where we had to come and call you to bring us in. Yeah. And he stopped me for gate. I said, Daddy, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you know you are stopping, but like, yes, no. it's such a success. Obi. How Bro. do you feel about the success of Obi's house? Do you think it was going to get this big? You see, it, like I said, it, it's a testimony because in Prayer City, when I did try to redefine myself, mm. or I did try, you know, plan myself, literally, you know, sometimes sometimes we like to tag it as our conscience mm. or uh, my mind, they tell me, no, yeah. I was praying. Yeah. And he gave me the playbook. This is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to do it. And the key to this is consistency. Mm. For a very long time, I wasn't consistent with a lot of things. Yeah. I, I lacked consistency. I would start something and not finish. Yeah. This time around, it's like anything you do now, you finish it. Because when you start it, mm. you get there. Then you just leave it. Why? Yeah. You understand? So now, follow this DJ thing. You want to do it well, leave the clubs. Yeah. The clubs are a problem for you because they're a huge distraction. Mm. So leave the clubs and create your own thing. Mm. Create your own thing that you can control, where you can control the vibe. If I want to play gospel for Obi's house, I feel play gospel and uh, people will vibe to it. Let me go f- the front. You understand? Yeah, truthfully, because every time I think about it, I'm like, the miss I'm going to do it. Uh, <laughs> I will bring her a chief call. Yeah, you understand? <laughs> so, um, that's how it started, man. And but, but did I think it would get there this fast? No, mm. I didn't. I just thought that over time, maybe people would just be looking at me like, what's this boy doing? But I just knew that this is my game plan. From here, I will do this, 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 and this. So Obi's, Obi's house was the first one. Um, and Bolivar was part of my healing process. Rashida is like an angel in human form. Mm. You know, Rashida didn't know there were times I would come to Bolivar during, when, during lockdown. Mm. There was no gigs. She didn't know I would come to Bolivar without a dime. I don't know how I could take piano, but maybe I'll call one of my guys. If you call UGK, if you call Dre, maybe they'll come. I'll just tell them, guy, pay for me out. But sometimes I didn't need to because Rashida would just order the food. I feel just, she, she can even just buzz to say, ah, what are you doing? Come through. It's almost like she even knew, she low-key knew there was Senses, something going yeah. on, but she just, so, so there were times where I'll pull up and like, bro, I've slept at Bolivar before. Like, taking a nap, woken yeah. up, or, you know, just, bro, it became my place as much as it was her place, you mm. know. So, even when COVID was dying down, fizzling out, and she was getting ready to open back up to, like, the, the to the public, mm. it was myself, Richard, and Nadi from Escape, you know, I was... Just speak- Steve after that. Yeah, exactly. Shout out to Richard. Eve, shout out yeah. to Richard, man. Richard was the one that actually put Monday in, in on the table. Yeah, Richard was the one that put Monday on the table, I was speaking to Rashida based on like a Thursday or Friday because I knew she was now trying to get Bolivar back on his feet. Yeah. But then Rashida was like, okay, instead of you doing another one, Richard doing another one, let's all talk about doing something together. Mm. But Richard is such a perfectionist. <laughs> so it was dragging, it was dragging, it was dragging, it was dragging for a while. And then it was not looking like it, was, like it wasn't going to happen. Mm. But then I was, I, but what we, we were trying to collaborate on a different idea. Mondays are not that serious. Monday is not that serious or mm-hmm. something like that. Mint. Yes, Monday is not that serious. You know, but Richard wanted to do this, do that, do that. Rashida, very proper. Uh, Rashida is a very strong businesswoman. Mm. You know, you, you can't believe Rashida. <laughs> yes. So when it looked like it was falling apart, I had to tell Rashida, Omo, I really didn't come to do this like this. I want a Thursday night, I want a Friday, but now it looks like nothing at all is going to happen. And she's just like, okay, cool. Do you, if you're down, I'm down. Let's get it. Let's do it. You know? And she was like, what day? What day? But I like the way Richard sold Monday was mind blowing to me. So I was like, I like Monday as well. If, if Richard is not going to do anything, I'll do Monday and I'll just take my time because my, mind you, my plan was just to take my time to do this thing, yeah. to build it piece by piece. Yeah. Go through the strains of rebuilding yourself. If you know this DJ thing is what you want to do, this next level for you is mm. going to blow you up. So if you're not ready for it, this is now the conversation I'm having in Prayer City. If you're not ready for it, leave it and look for a nine to five. You, My network is always there. I can tap into someone to say, get me a job, were you going to do a 9 to 5? Bro, it at was... At that point? At that point, yeah, I was. Because COVID had hit, you yeah. know? So, we weren't sure how things were going to get back to how they True. used to be. So, I was ready to be like, you know, change a career, do that, maybe move back to the States, find something nice, you know, something, you know. But as God will have it, you know, Rashida was just like, you know, let's get it started. Mondays, 
and it was just myself, Sunshine, you know, um, my friends. UGK. It was just like six of us, nine mm-hmm. of us. So Mao, me, Mbwaje. Yeah. And we would just literally come out in Monday night. Obi, the DJ. Make Obi give us vibes. We'll just we just do. We go just do. Do you Monday know night. what you've done on a Monday? I now you get, for this whole Lagos, now you get Monday. <laughs> After people close from work, their bosses have nine to five. <laughs> from seven, eight, Obi. Now you get, I don't even go anywhere again. Bro. It's After a blessing. It's After a blessing, church on Sunday, yeah. on Monday, I can deal with you. <laughs> it's a blessing, bro. And the truth is, I really just wanted to be able to give out good vibes mm. because naturally, I'm a good person. I know yeah, I've made my mistakes. Know. You know what I'm saying? I know I've done my my dogged, I've, 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 I've had my dogged ways or whatever it is, but that's not me. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm really just trying to make to make the world a better place. Yeah. <laughs> you get it? Mm. So it was really just to sell good vibes, honestly speaking, and it took off, bro. But I don't need to preach, but you know, mm. this I always preach for this thing. You yeah, understand? Preacher, bro. On my couch. But I, I just, I've learned that, you know, like most of the, for the beginning of my career, I was struggling a lot because I wanted to do things by myself. Mm. Like, and, and everything that I've asked God for, once I've prayed in line with his will, I just say, you know what, God, please sort this out. Yeah. It's always done it. Yeah, so man. now I've, I have now stopped that hustle. So it's, I'm less stressed now. Those hustle of, I need to be here. I need to please this thank person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm not you, in yeah. a very, sweet space where I just like God let your will be done direct me to some of this it can be very random I don't mm. even want to talk about things that have happened on this podcast but so many random situations have happened yeah. that I now know who's running this shit mm-hmm. so Thank I'm not you. moved anymore being confident in your originality so Yeesh, my I'll brother. tell you this a lot of times I was shy because I didn't think that I, you know what I'm saying but bro I'll say this boldly right now there are a lot of things I started in in Lagos mm. from since I moved back and this is why I needed to start my own thing yes right? like yes. for instance you know I I, I DJ'd at SIP for, for years yeah. you know and I just didn't see myself as the guy that was bringing all these people mm. you understand what I'm saying bro when I was at Vapors we, we started Bottle Girl Service at Vapors Jessica I was watching your episode with uh, Ulo mm. and, yeah, and Abby. Abby bro Ask Jessica, ask Lide. We started that bottle girl service situation at Vapors, mm. but then the girls moved to Quillox and Quillox blew it up from Quillox and now started spreading out. Mm. You know, um, what else? Like different parties, you know, you've been to so many parties that have become a thing, but it would just be music by Obi. But you won't know that me and this person sat down, and but because jazz, I, yeah. the, the plan was I will cover music and you will cover the door and logistics yeah. that person took all the shine and just ran with it and at some point they will probably stop paying me as a DJ you understand all those kind of things so I'll just now go back in my shell like oh God what was all this something yeah. where I, I give this person now they don't carry on go but bro Chin and I started day parties in Lagos as far back as 2012 we started the, the re-up you know and we're doing we're trying to do it like only for December folks and blah 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 and he morphed into Grill at the Pent. And Grill at the Pent morphed into all these other things. You did the Grill at the Pent? Bro. No, they only did Grill at the Pent, yeah. Bankhead. But it started off from mm. that day, from that day party vibe. But because we didn't want to always run it from the for the whole year, we were only doing it in December. But the venue needed something that would run the whole year. And they only just happened to be there in that position. You understand what I'm saying? There were so many things that, that I was doing. And I just felt I wasn't getting my credit for it. And I was shy to speak up to be like, oh, not me do I move. You know, that was it. So, but my confidence is back. And it's time to just king this shit I'm all happy. the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> DJ Obi, please. I mean, let me sign out of this show. Obi. Hey, listen, it's your boy DJ Obi. Check me out, Bolivar, every Monday, Obi's house on a Monday night. Check out the merch when you come through. And shout out to Timmy San. Listen, proud of you for, for everything. Every time we, we just used to just uh, when he used to sip tea in his uh, in his room, you know, but he's blown it up. So you guys check out the episode. Follow me on Instagram at DJ will be AJ ENT and check out everything that we're doing. Thank you, and that's the end of my show today. Peace. Peace.